today we're going to talk about the reproductive blueprint for the NCCPA blueprint for the pants and pantry. The first item on the re reproductive uh, blueprint is the uterus. There are several topics under the uterus, and the first topic we're going to talk about is dysfunctional uterine bleeding. Now, dysfunctional uterine bleeding is defined as an irregular uh, uterine bleeding not due to anatomical lesions in the uterus. So the patient can't have any fibroids or any, any sort of malignancy. Um, uh, a key component that you need to remember is dysfunctional uterine bleeding is usually due to anovulation, due to uh, polycystic ovarian disease, uh, exogenous obesity, or adrenal or uh, to adrenal uh, hyperplasia. Uh, females with dysfunctional uterine bleeding often have uh, heavy uterine bleeding. With uh, women with uh, dysfunctional uterine bleeding, usually have a chronic uh, uh, esterus. They have non-regular estrogen concentrations that simulate growth and development of the endometrium. When there is no predictable defect in the ovulation, there is uh, no progesterone-induced changes. With dysfunctional uterine bleeding, the endometrium thickens and grows, outgrows the supply and sloughs off, causing irregular heavy bleeding that's not predictable. Uh, if there is chronic stimulation of uterine lining uh, form, uh, uh, um, uh, low blood estrogen, the episodes of dysfunction and bleeding are infrequent and light. Uh, whereas uh, when there's uh, um, chronic stimulation and higher, uh, high, high estrogen levels, the episodes of dysfunction and bleeding are heavy and often. Missed cycle spotting can happen with ovulation and is usually, so, usually self-limited and attributed due to a sudden drop of estrogen. <clears throat> Before a diagnosis of uh, dysfunctional uterine bleeding can be made, you need to rule out structural causes such as uh, uterine uh, lyomyoma, uh, infection, inflammation, the general tract, cervical cancer, endometrial cancer, cervical erosions, uh, cervical polyps, or a lesion within the vagina itself. Complications of dysfunctional uterine bleeding include blood loss, endometrial hyperplasia that can lead to carcinoma, incapacitating uh, uh, and incapacitating incapacitating everyday living. One treatment of dysfunctional uterine bleeding includes a uh, high-dose progesterone for at least 10 days and trying to thin the endometrial stripe from withdrawal bleeding. Another strategy uh, is implementing con uh, contraceptives, uh, oral contraceptives, to establish a regular withdrawal cycle to make, uh, make it predictable. If, if treatment fails, uh, the patient may need a d uh, DNC. The next topic I want to talk about is endometrial cancer. Endometrial cancer, uh, um, we'll start with uh, endometrial hyperplasia, is a uh, abnormal proliferation of the glandular and stromal elements uh, showing high, I'm sorry, all, showing altered histological architecture. Endometrial proliferation is an overabundance of endometrial, whereas endometrial hyperplasia involves the structural elements. Differences uh, types of endometrial hyperplasia include cystic glandular hyperplasia, adenomatous uh, hyperplasia, and atypical adenomatous hyperplasia. An important concept is with est continued estrogen stimulation, though the either endogenous or exogenous sim sources, simple endometrial proliferation will lead to endometrial hyperplasia. It sort of just feeds the cancer. Risk factors for endometrial hyperplasia include endometrial carcinoma or anything that increases uh, in the estrogen environment. Diagnosis of endometrial hyperplasia or carcinoma is made by taking a sample. Common ways to accomplish this is through endometrial biopsy, uh, DNC, or removing the uterus. The most common indication for endometrial sampling is abnormal bleeding, especially those over 35. Most endometrial polyps are focal, accentuated, benign, and hyperplastic processes. Estrogen is implicated in antecedent hyperplasia. However, the actual stimulus to malignant degeneration of endometrial carcinoma is unclear. Endometrial carcinoma usually occurs in women uh, that are postmenopausal. Most co primary endometrial carcinomas are adenocarcinomas. Special consider for endometrial sampling would, should be given to those with postmenopausal bleeding that occurs after six months of amenorrhea. Endometrial carcinoma usually spreads through the endometrial cavity first and then begins to invade the myometrium into cervical canal and then the lymphatics. 
once the endometrial spread is into the abdominal and pelvic cavity, the spread is similar to ovarian cancer. Common histologic types of endometrial carcinoma include papillary, serous adenocarcinoma, and clear cell carcinoma. The biggest prognostic factors is a histological grade of endometrial cancer, grading systems G1 to G3. Surgical treatment is the cornerstone of therapy for endometrial carcinoma. The abdominal and pelvic cavity are, are, is explored in a, uh, usually a, um, a total abdominal uh, subpingo ophorectomy is performed. Adjunctive therapy may include external beam radiation to produce recurrence. The first line treatment of recurrent disease uh, is hormonal uh, and includes the progesterone at high doses. Chemotherapy is also used. The next topic I want to talk about is endometriosis. Endometriosis is simply the presence of endometrial tissue where it shouldn't be uh, or at extraudient lo locations. Endometriosis typically presents with uh, complaints of infertility, dysmenorrhea, dyspareunia, or painful intercourse, uh, or in chronic pelvic pain. The, the pain typically be, is cyclical with their cycles, too, because um, uh, it's hormone-responsive tissue. The definitive diagnosis of endometriosis requires histologic confirmation at the time of laparoscopy. The exact pathogenesis of endometriosis is unknown, but there are several theories that have been postulated. These include direct implantation of endometrial cells by means of retrograde menstruation, vascular or lymphatic dissemination of endometrial cells, cholemic metaplasia of multi-potential uh, uh, cells in the perineal cavity. Endomyosis or endometrial implants found deep in the uterine wall. The most common site of endometriosis is usually the ovary, and it's usually bilateral. Different approaches uh, to different patients in treatment. Um, women in their late 40s with mild symptoms may just observe or wait on menopause, decrease the hormones, and will, will, will not stimulate growth of disease, and their pain should subside. Medical therapy is aimed at in inducing act in in inactivity of endometrial tissue. Progesterones alone have been administered orally and parentally. Uh, Danazol, uh, a 17-alpha al ethanol testosterone derivative, suppresses LH and FSH, so suppress estrogen, which does not allow the uh, um, endometrial cells to be stimulated. GnRH, um, such as uh, Lupron injections uh, suppresses F LH and FSH, which suppresses estrogen. Surgical uh, therapy is also is either conservative or expiratory. Conservative uh, surgery includes excision, cauterization, ablation of endometriosis, and preserving of the uterus. Definitive surgery includes uh, total abdominal hysterectomy, bilateral syphinga ophorectomy, Lysis of adhesions in tumor, or I'm sorry, removal of endometriosis. Lyomyoma are benign uterine growths, also referred to as fibroids or myomas. Lyomyomas are the majority of the time produce mild symptoms, but this is the most common indication for hysterectomy. The most common symptoms of lyomyoma are uh, pelvic pain, uh, secondary to dysmenorrhea, menorrhagia, pressure, and sympt pressure symptoms in the pelvis. Lyomomas are considered hormonally sensitive uh, tumors uh, related to estrogen progesterone. I'm sorry, estrogen production. 0.1% of lyomomas develop malignancy called lyomyosarcoma. Intravenous lyomyositosis is an invasion of the uh, pelvic veins and even the deep inferior vena cava. Diagnosis of lyomyoma is based on clinical exam, by manual examination, and imaging studies. The majority of patients with lyomyoma do not require surgery. The endometrial tissue can be biopsied, and endometrial, can uh, and endometrial cancer and hyperplasia can be ruled out. The use of prostaglandin inhibitors, such as NSAIDs, to minimize uterine bleeding, uh, and also can use uh, intermittent progesterone stimulation, uh, or the hallmarks of therapy. Um, consider... Uh, consider Considered a conservative approach can be attempted, especially if menopausal is, menopausal is eminent. Surgery treatment can include myectomy uh, if consideration having further children or hysterectomy. 
GnRH analogs can be used for suppressive uh, therapy of the estrogen. The last topic we're going to talk about under the uterus section is uterine prolapse. Uterine prolapse is simply when the uh, pelvic muscles laxity cause downward displacement of the uterus. First degree uh, uterine prolapse is when the descent is limited to the upper two-thirds of the vagina. Second degree uh, uterine prolapse is when the uterus structure approaches the, the vaginal introitus. Third degree uterine prolapse is when the uterine structure is outside of the vagina. Non-surgical treatment includes support of the pe via presseries and kegel exercises. Surgical treatment involves repair of the tissue defects. Uh, estrogen replacement can also be an adjunct to postmenopausal women, especially in appropriate patients.